Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked that because it's been a month since the last time we recorded. <laughs> so some people probably <laughs> do need a refresher. Uh, Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire remaining life force to watching every single Shonen Jump anime that is available to us in English because <laughs> we don't know any other language but English. And in subtitles, I should say specifically. Yes, um, we can read. Yeah, we can Mostly. read for sure. Uh, don't believe everything you see about Yu-Gi-Oh players and Dragon Ball fans, even though we got both of those demerits going against us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we're really we're fighting it. We're fighting it too for Dale for sure. But yeah, we plan to do this until the end of time itself, or the end of us ourselves, whichever one gives up. I think we're gonna outlive the universe itself, Zen. I think we can do it. <laughs> I think it's think possible. Push through? I think so. I think it's totally okay. possible. All right. All right. All right. Uh, the big series we go through is obviously Gintama. Both me and Zen have been too crazy busy with work to actually dedicate our time to watching Gintama. Oh, dude, it's been such a nightmare. I'm so excited. <sighs> Next week, I don't have like a horrible Friday. I'm really looking forward to that. Me, me too. So we can finally get back to <laughs> finally actually start. Yes, because we did. Now that I've said that though, I guarantee you, a bunch of people are going to schedule stuff on Friday. Oh. I know it's going to happen. Well, we aren't going to mention it. But our main big one is Gintama, and then the two rotating ones we see are Kuroko's Basketball and Jujutsu Kaisen. And also, crazy enough, if you think about it, since the last time we took a break from Shonen Archive, shit has also been going crazy in Jujutsu Kaisen, and Kuroko's Basketball is about to get a... Uh, the, the writer for it is about to get a new manga in Shonen Jump, right? It's already out. Damn! i for two chapters now. <laughs> called kill blue it's really good honestly i like it a lot i think you'd like it too i'll probably start reading it actually i didn't know that it was uh, about a it's about a assassin who gets like medical it's basically case closed but he's an assassin instead of a detective oh okay i'm down for that and he gets uh he gets put into public school because he wants he's supposed to be scouting this school to see if it's good enough for like one of his employer's daughters to go to and so he's like going to school there but he's an old man but he uh, he actually really likes going to school because he like never went as a kid, so he's like vibing really hard at this fucking middle school. It's really good. <laughs> All right, I'll make sure to actually read that. My one problem he with... shoots uh, at Pedo Bear in the first chapter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> say no more. I'm already there. Oh, I'm sold with that one statement. But yeah. And speaking of Kuriko, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Kuriko's Basketball, episodes 11 through 15, which I watched almost a month ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> thankfully I have some notes down here for when stuff happens, but I'm ready to talk about it. These were some really good five episodes, so <laughs> I'm down to talk about them. Are you ready, Zen? I am ready. Then go ahead and start us off with episode eleven. It's not like that is the name of the of the episode. It's literally it's just it's not like that. That's the name of the title. It is the title. Yeah. So uh, we pick up right after Kuroko's big uh, hero moment, where he gives the tornado pass to Kagami or the whirlwind pass or whatever it's called, uh, and they dunk. So they're down by just a little bit. And they've got some momentum going on. But then uh, the little goofy sidekick for Mitarima starts uh, covering Kuroko, and it turns out that he has the Hawk's Eye ability, which is like the same thing that their teammate has with the Eagle Eye, but even better. I don't know how that scales in the real world with uh, Hawks and Eagles, which one looks better, but (laughs) in this series, Hawks are better. All right, fair enough. Um, mm -hmm. And then we get the reveal, because everyone thought that um, Mitarima could shoot from midcourt but it turns out he can actually make the shot from anywhere and it's a fucking amazing scene when he does it because he's just standing all the way at the other side of the court and they're like what the fuck and he shoots and it goes in oh it's so good uh midarima argues that he should be the only one shooting and they're like all right just give him the ball um Theron is trying to figure out what to do about him because he can just shoot from anywhere. Um, And they can't because Takao is kind of locking Kuroko down. He's stopping his feels. He's uh, stopping his passes. Basically, he's got Kuroko kind of completely locked down and Minorima's just going crazy. Uh, They end the 
second quarter, I think it is, with uh, down by a lot. And then Kagami has like a, a sinister anime laugh, and they realize that he might just have a plan for how to deal with Midorima. Yeah, and that's the end of the episode right there. Right? Yes. I believe it ends yes. here. Okay. Uh, some things that I can make note of this. I love this because I've always wondered, any time I've ever watched a sport anything, I always wonder, you know, a lot of these players seem to be playing by rules. What if they just broke the rules? And then I always get the response of, well, it's technically illegal to do that. And I said, that's not any fun. <laughs> that, that's why every time I... You should just do it anyway. Yeah, that's what I was like. So one of my thoughts, especially for basketball, has always been, why don't you just make three-pointers all the time? <laughs> and also from anywhere, if you can just constantly make it in, what's to stop you? Um, and I think the response I always got from people is that I think it's actually not allowed. Or I don't know if it's not allowed or it's just le- actual and imp- actually impossible to shoot from the entire it's, court. It's, it's definitely allowed because I've seen people – like do like you know where you just hurl the ball across the court and hope it goes in when there's like one second left mm-hmm. um so it's definitely legal it's just really hard like you can't so Midorima's thing is that he does it with like proper form but like you can't get enough power in proper form to do it that way um but you can definitely like jump and chuck it and if it goes in it still counts um mm, okay I but see. there there are shots in this show that are taken that are legal like, uh, later on, someone goes out of bounds and actually shoots from behind the basket, and that is illegal. You, like, you can't technically do that in basketball, I'm told. I don't watch it, but I'm told you can't. <laughs> Otherwise, you just so be they, completely They loosely sick. interpret the rules, so don't don't think about NBA regulations so, too much. So it's, kind of, it's, it's, the, it's the air bud. Um, no, nowhere in the rule book does it say that a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll fair fair enough. I'll take that. But yeah, I really like this, especially because it seemed like, uh, based off of the ending of the last episode, that he got a little shook based off of how quickly they were able to do the pass, and then he b- basically in a single episode is able to take that and then basically take the momentum back because now it's no longer that they're um, kind of shaking him he's shaking them back because he's based they've basically shut down everything that they were going to try and do like with kuriko he's basically been countered which is the first time i think we've ever seen him just actually get hard countered in a way um which was really cool to see because it, literally it seemed like they would always constantly lean on him to do something so um to see him basically have to fight without the ability to actually use him was cool to see um and yeah just shooting three pointers from so far away the way they set it up too i also really like that they say like one of the reasons why it's so effective is because of how slow it is you just have to slowly watch a ball go in and watch yourself slowly lose Uh uh-huh and there's nothing you can do about it because the shots are so high yeah the shots are so high and it's so crazy that you just get demoralized (laughs) because you're watching someone to, like get the ball immediately and then right away score three points. <laughs> so that's cool. And yeah, the ending here when it looks like things are they've been kind of cooked. Um, Midorima starts laughing, and it seems like it's there's Kagami. That's oh, Kagami. <laughs> oh my bad. The other guy. My bad. My bad. Uh, Kagami starts laughing, and it seems like he's at least. <laughs> has a plan for something either that or he's having having a complete breakdown but we've seen him before where when he's kind of pushed to his limits he starts to enjoy the game a lot more so cool cool stuff good good flow for this one um of them making it seem like even though they were able to counter one of his stuff with the the super crazy pass in the last episode they're gonna need a lot more than just a single crazy pass to actually take advantage and win the game it's not gonna be that easy how do you feel, Zen? Uh, really good episode. I like this game in general for a lot of reasons that I can't say yet because we're not done talking about the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but this game is really good. Um, I think that Mitarima is a better introduction to like the real generation of miracles. Th- that's unfair because Kisei is definitely really good. Um, but I think the game <laughs> against him was a little bit more like even feeling. 
Whereas the beginning of this game feels totally hopeless. Of like, what the fuck do we do? This guy can just score better than we can, faster than we can from anywhere. Um, yeah, kind of. That's so- a really good tone for the game. It's funny because they really set up the generation with him specifically. They set him up as this is the worst of them, and he was already very hard to beat. <laughs> Yeah. So, what does it mean when you fight not the worst member? It means this. It's a lot of how, what. If it, it just feels unfair, <laughs> it feels like I'm fighting with, I'm fighting God. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm losing a battle here. But yeah, you're yeah, right about that. It's it's great. No disrespect to him. Hopefully, he doesn't feel slighted in the least. Even though I think he probably would feel a little bit for being the weakest, but. Ah, yeah. So, good episode. Let's move on to the next one. Episode 12, titled, What's Victory? They're already letting you know. Hey, man, what the hell's victory? What the hell do we do? (laughs) What the fuck do we do here? Yeah. Um, So, Shutoku is stomping. We're we're into the second half now. Uh, Kuroko is studying the cow's tape to try to figure out how to get around him. But they keep him out of the game for right now because he really can't do anything with Takao right there. And his skill set is so specialized that when someone is there that can counter it, he, he's not useful anymore. Like, he doesn't have the physicality to be useful. Um, as the game keeps going, though, Midorima is shooting and Kagami actually gets a fingertip on it. And Midorima realizes that Kagami is getting higher and higher every time... Uh, he goes to shoot, Kagami's jumping higher and higher trying to block it. Um, He does end up getting a hand on one. um, Midorima misses for the first time. It still gets put in with a rebound, but all in all, everyone's amazed that Kagami was able to touch it. And then he gives a proper block on it, and they start kind of countering it around. And then we get the reveal that Kagami has... uh, essentially overestimated like he's he's gone too hard um and it, he's hurting his legs doing it so he can't keep jumping that hard forever but he wants to win on his own power um and he does he, he basically says like we don't need to work together you guys can't do anything give me the ball and i'll win us the game and then kuroko punches him <laughs> and he says like fuck you uh and kagami Comes back around, because that's, you know, kind of the toxic mindset from his old Taiko school that Kuroko hated, was the whole, like, I'll just do it, because I'm the best. Like, you know, mm-hmm. Kuroko hates that shit. Um, and it's also kind of what Kise warned about, if you remember the conversation before they play the pickup game with the, the shitheads. Yeah. Uh, where Kise's kind of like, you know, he's really good, he's gonna turn out like us, because that's the natural evolution of someone who's just that much better than everyone else is it becomes annoying to them to have to rely on other people because you're just going to drag them down. Uh, but Kuroko kind of brings him back, and then he says that he has got a plan to turn the game around by the end. Mm. <sighs> yes, this one, this was also great. This game is just, like, super... The funny thing is is that I was like, oh, thank God I had notes, and then I remembered, fuck, I was actually just enjoying this so much I didn't take a lot of notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because well, I was. I mean, to be fair, a lot of it is just cool basketball moves. So a lot, like, a lot of it is really cool basketball, but it's a, it's a lot of fun, like back and forth. It's a lot of like, like the energy and pace of it is exactly. It's kind of like the difference between when basketball is actually super legitimately good. Like, I, I'm not someone who watches a lot of basketball, but I do know if I'm just. I'm not someone who can actually just watch basketball because if I watch just a regular game of basketball, I go, oh, okay, it's basketball. Yeah, dudes do that. But when you see a really good ass game of basketball, even if you don't give a fuck about basketball, the energy of it and the back and forth of it is just so intense that it makes you go like, "Fuck yeah!" I've I this is the only thing I care about right now is the ability for this man to make this jump right now. And I feel like that's something that's easily captured in movies, and I feel like they've captured this perfectly in animated form. Um, Slam Dunk is also something that's very good that captured it extremely well in manga form. Don't know about the anime because I haven't actually watched the anime yet, but I assume it's also good there. But um, they capture it in a really good way, so that when I'm watching it, I'm just kind of absorbed into the actual game and kind of want to see it <laughs> and see how it goes and stuff like that. Um, 
But yeah, I like some stuff like the setup with Kuroko. Like you said, the a lot of good setup from the things they've kind of seen in the past, and then also some things that we learn in some future episodes kind of put some more weight behind it, just because Kuroko doesn't really seem like the kind of guy who would just be throwing punches on dude. He doesn't really seem like that kind of MC <laughs> who would go around punching people. <laughs> So he has to give a whole lot for him to get to the point where he's punching someone. He's also punching Kagame, which if he wanted to give a receipt back, he would be absolutely destroyed. Yes. He's like twice his height. It would be yeah. like uh, when Cell uh, hit back on Mr. Satan, just completely <laughs> <laughs> just boom right into the cliff. <laughs> that would be Kurko's next move, basically. Um. But yeah, I think it really is a good way of showing how much he doesn't want him to kind of walk down this path and have this mindset because it's a the mindset that will soon make it so that he can actually enjoy basketball because in that moment it doesn't really seem like he's enjoying the game. He's just wanting to beat the other people, which is not the same thing as just straight up enjoying the game and stuff like that. So, it's a bad toxic mindset like you said beforehand. Um, I also had a joke here, which I'm glad this is the one note I had for it, which is Kuroko Punch, my exact moment of feeling when he threw the punch, and then my follow-up tweet, which was alternate title, The Punch Which Kuroko Threw. (laughs) (laughs) Great stuff, great stuff here. That's pretty good, that's good. It is. That's what you all come here for. (laughs) Quality bands. I think I made a joke about the title of Kuroko, of the actual title of Kuroko's title of the the title of the show every single time because I really do think I you know I'm coming around to it. I'm starting to think it's actually a brilliant title. The basketball which Kuroko, Kuroko plays. plays. I think it might actually be sick. It might actually be one of the greatest titles to a manga ever. It's a shame that he's just called Kuroko's basketball now. Um but yeah, I also really like the stuff. Uh, showing Kagame get better. We've kind of seen him in previous games where they've kind of hinted at that he has something in him, but they haven't outright said what it is. Though, if you use context clues, I guess you would figure out, oh, he's just very good at jumping. Yeah. And th- that that was my... Yeah, I was expecting him to have, like, some kind of crazy power. Like, th- no, nah, he just he just jump real good. But to be fair, he do be jumping really, really good. He do be jumping, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I also appreciate how much, like, um, the reaction to him jumping, it makes it seem like he's devastating them, (laughs) and all he's doing is jumping higher than he was beforehand, but they treat it like, oh my god, this jump is insane! (laughs) He's just getting better at jumping every single time, which I appreciate. There's something inherently funny about characters react it's why dragon ball z is so good because a lot of dragon ball z in the old days was uh someone doing a move and then the next five minutes our characters going oh oh that move (laughs) i can't believe that move did that (laughs) it's like in pokemon where uh something happens and brock is like holy shit yeah exactly (laughs) it is 100 percent. sometimes it's just better when other characters like holy shit did you see that (laughs) let's talk about that for a bit and really uh stress about it um i think it's good but yeah i think it was a super enjoyable game it was nice to see the team kind of try and react to a game where they don't really have kuroko in it at all because they can't really use him because he's just not going to be very useful for him and again, like you said, just it straight up feels like despair. Like, what's victory is a good title for this because it just feels like, how the hell do they win this? Like, even as I was watching it, and even as they're like, uh, Kagame is literally like getting better as it's going through, I'm still going, like, there's no way they actually can win this. <laughs> it just doesn't feel like a winnable game at all. So I was hooked, line, and sinker for it. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, also great. Um, I really like the title because I also it's a nice play on words with uh, Kagami's kind of shitty mindset where it's like, is it really winning if we play that way? It's really good. Mm. Um, I like in general, every time Kagami jumps, it's such a mundane activity. But yeah, like they always make it like, holy fuck, <laughs> this dude be <laughs> leaping. It's like the biggest deal. Yes, um, it's 100% like, oh my god, this jump is insane! Yeah, it's, uh, it's fucking rad. Um, 
than I like in general. Every time Kuroko, like, it's it's such a generic anime cliffhanger. But whenever someone's like, oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I got a plan. And then it's like the cliffhanger. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's going to be so good. <laughs> you want to see what the plan is. You want to know. <laughs> you want to see what is going on here. Because I'm also watching going, brother, how are you winning? <laughs> it seems unwinnable. <laughs> Ah, uh, we yeah, have good episode. Now let's see how this all ends here. With the this is the final episode of this specific game, I believe. It is yes. episode thirteen. I believed in you. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what it is about. So the final quarter of the game uh, starts up. Kagami gets told that he only has two jumps left, so he has two jumps to go. Um. He uses the first to block Midorima so that they think he can keep doing it, basically. He's bluffing that he can keep jumping like that as much as he wants, even though he's at his limit. Um, Kuroko starts using misdirection techniques to slip past Takao, which is cool. And then he uses uh, the Ignite Pass, which is a pass that's too hard for the rest of the team to catch. Only Kagami can catch it. Um, and he starts using that pass to get the ball to Kagami quickly to get as close as they can to tying up the score. Um, the Shutoku coach basically tells them, like, look, they're catching back up, but don't listen to Kagami's bluff. Like, he's too, too exhausted. There's no way he can keep going. Um, they end up kind of basically uh, getting close to taking the lead, and then Mitarima does end up scoring really close. And I think there's, like, 30 seconds left before they decide they need to jump out like th to score one more time. Um, and they're up by just a little bit. The ball gets to Midorima. Kagami manages to like force another jump out. Like he's he's out of them. They, they he said he had two. He's used his two already. He manages to force out just one more, but Midorima expects that and he like fakes. And so then he goes to take the shot now that Kagami is falling. But in the process of faking to pull the ball down, Kuroko was right there and uh, steals it from him because he believed that Kagami would be able to push past his limits and make that jump, so he just needed to guard the lower end, uh, which he did. So Seiren wins, just barely, and then uh, it ends with Midorima standing in, like, anime rain, <laughs> like, really dramatic anime rain, because he lost. Uh, and he gets a phone call from another member of the Generation of Miracles, which is uh, Almine, who I'm very excited for you to meet. Mm-hmm. He also, with this dramatic range shot, he's doing the anime down bad profile pic. He's, do <laughs> he, he's, he's, he, he's 100% doing it to the point where I was like, oh man, this really sells that he's going through it all. <laughs> he can't handle much more of this. He really wanted to win that game. Okay, so yes, uh, this was a fucking great episode. I love seeing how they figure because i think it was either in this when previous episodes someone mentions that kuroko is only as good because kuroko is a shadow so he's only as good as the player that he is with so meaning that kuroko's like um specific power set as he is at this moment is only as good as uh the person that he's with right now which would be uh uh why, why the fuck did I just, like, blank on his fucking... Kaga Kagame. So the the better Kagame gets, the better Kuroko gets, because he's basically able to unlock just a little bit more of what he can do at full power. Because as long as he's stronger, then he kind of, like, casts a wider shadow and stuff like that. So you kind of start to see some of that where he's like, okay, he can basically handle me at a stronger pace, so I'm going to start doing some of the more crazy shit that I used to do. <laughs> so he's able to do this pass that only he can do. He's able to figure out how to stop the other dude, which I'm, gra I'm glad that he was able to. Something about specifically the characters that are always underestimating Kuroko are the ones that I end up hating the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to to like those guys. Yeah, especially this one, because I'm always just like, okay, Kuroko's about... I just, I'm just waiting for him to, like, fucking get ready to destroy them in some ways. And thankfully he does in this one, and completely... Uh, screws him up, even though he was their ace in the hole to stop him because he could see him, so that was great. 
Uh, I like the fake out that they did where he's just like, we're just going to put the fear of God in your jumping. Just make them think that you can still jump at them <laughs> by just keep going. By yeah, just, the- just paralyze them with fear. Yes, which after uh, dealing with a whole bunch of Marvel Snap, I know that fear. Where it's like, I don't, I don't think this person can actually beat me. But also, if they have this one thing, I lose. Yep. <laughs> so it's, it's the like, worst feeling. It is the worst feeling of the world when you're like, I know I can win this, but there's literally one thing, one card in the entire game that stops me. And now I have the fear of God into it because the last time I played someone, they had it right there when I thought they wouldn't have it. They were running something that they didn't even (laughs) meld good with their deck. And now I'm afraid. And that's basically what their game plan here is to stop them is that we just put the fear of God in them. And it works. I like the ending bit here where uh, it's uh, Huga is one of the ones who are able to do a three. I think this is where they show like um, his training about being able to take shots where they show him getting all his uh, figures destroyed. Is this this? Oh, is yeah. The- uh, that's how he uh, how he learns to shoot well. Is because every time he missed, he would get one of his figures destroyed. Yes, absolutely destroyed. They have like this montage of all his figures being destroyed as he continuously tries to make it. He's like, and uh, the lady, lady team manager is like, "Don't worry, he'll make it in. It's it's drilled into him at this point that when it matters, he won't miss, and he's able to make it. And that was great. Um, and yeah, that final shot where it's like. Uh, only a couple seconds left they start celebrating and they're going like oh yeah we won there's just a couple seconds left on the clock you're like no one can make it and then the ball goes to the guy who can make it from anywhere (laughs) yep (laughs) it was like a horror movie i was like going like no 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 you idiots the horror movie monster yes it was 100 like that i was going go to him what are you doing don't do this don't lose this way after going for so much don't fucking lose in the dumbest way possible is that you started celebrating going yeah there's no way that they can make it and then it goes to the ball who can goes to the guy who can make it from anywhere and they go oh no we forgot we were so happy that we forgot that this guy can make shots from anywhere but yeah when they start making forward the, towards him and they're like uh kagami's like oh yeah i'm going to make the jump because i think i can still make it and then he does the jump and you're thinking like oh he went past the limits and then he goes and he goes like nah nah i scouted that i knew you were gonna go past your limits i read you like a book now i'm gonna actually legitimately make this shot and then kuroko goes like i knew that he was gonna make it and that you were gonna do this and so therefore i'm here already to stop you just perfect just like oh back to back to back to reveals it's like uh, an amazing chain link in Yu-Gi-Oh! Of people going like, I use this, I use this, I use this, and you go, ah, fuck. <laughs> okay, I lose. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful stuff here. <laughs> Excellently well played. Super enjoyable. It was a hard-ass trying to, a hard-ass victory for them to try and win this. And yeah, you can really feel that, um... Mina Rima, which I really liked, because at this point he hasn't really been showing, like, too much emotion other than, I can win this. At the end, when he's actually in the rain and he's, like, feeling super down about it, you can see that, no, he actually did legitimately care about this game, and he loves basketball, and that's... So he takes that loss with, like, a heavy, because he's just like, god damn, I literally had everything. How did I lose? <laughs> how how does this happen? And yeah, it just, it's, uh... Oh, is great stuff. Fantastic. Through and through. Great ass game. Loved it, as you can tell here from my pure excitement of <laughs> going over what is essentially a basketball game in which the main power behind it is can this man jump just one more time? <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I like too, though, just the play uh, between like Midorima analyzing the play and being like, I- I've got it, and then Kuroko being like, I, I'm not analyzing anything. I just have faith that my buddy is going to do what he needs to do, so I'm going to do what I need to do, and it works out. Yeah. It's a good uh, callback also to the beginning of the game where Kuroko makes the pass. He just knew that Kagame was going to be there. And he was gonna, after he told him, like, he's going to make it, he's going to be able to take this shot. It shows a lot of trust between the two of them, uh, which is good, which I really like. And, yeah. 
Good episode. How do you feel, Zen? Good. Peak shit. I, uh, like I said, I really like this game. Uh, I like most of the Generation of Miracles games. This one's especially good because we kind of start getting that hint where Kagami is really pulling away from the pack. You know, he's not just like, oh, he's the best player on the team. It's like, oh, he's our only hope <laughs> kind mm. of stuff thing, um, which I really like. I like Kuroko's whole you need to get your shit together because you're not going to turn out like them stuff. I like when he uh, applies the misdirection to get around Takao because Takao kind of makes Kuroko look like a one-trick pony for a lot of this game. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, oh, if you can counter his his passes, he's not any good at all. He's just like, you know, has that one niche skill. Um, I really like that Kuroko's kind of like, actually, no, I'm really, really good at what I do. <laughs> if I just need a minute, <laughs> uh, which is cool. All in all, great game. Very good game. Yep, very good. And let's go on to episode 14, which is called You Look Just Like Him. Go ahead, Zen. Uh, so they are in a restaurant. Like, I forget I forget if they're celebrating or if they're uh, it's like post-training. I don't it, remember it's it's it a post-game. It's post-game. It's post game. They're celebrating. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they're in a restaurant together, and uh, they end up going to the same restaurant where the the Generation of Miracles member and their like team sidekick, because they all have like the one team sidekick, um, are also in the same restaurant, and so they end up having Kuroko, Kagami, uh, Midorima, and Kite all at the same table, and. Um, they're like awkwardly hanging out, uh, and then they talk a little bit about Almine, who is going to be one of their future opponents. He is the ace of the Generation of Miracles. They go to leave the restaurant, and they find a puppy, and they name him uh, Tetsuya Two because he just looks like Kuroko. He has the same face. He, he, he one hundred percent just looks like Kuroko. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Kagami is terrified of dogs, uh, so he doesn't like to be around the dog. He also is being held out of practice because he is too messed up from overexerting himself. So he's kind of pissed off, and he's, like, out shooting alone. Um, The original team manager for the Generation of Miracles, his name is Momoi, shows up, and she visits them, and they, like, everyone gets jealous because she introduces herself as Kuroko's girlfriend. Um, Her specialty is, like, She's a spy, basically. She, like, watches people and gathers information for the team to use. Uh, So she recognizes all of the Seiren players because she's already kind of scouted them. Um, And she reveals that she goes to the same school as Aomine. And so she's giving her services to that team now. And then Kagami is approached by Aomine on the court that they're on. And Aomine says, you're you're not very impressive. And basically, you're not worthy of uh, Kuroko, is more or less what he says. And then they challenge each other to a little one-on-one. Mm. Yeah, that's where it ends. Uh, this also has a new OP and a new ED as well. The opening fire, opening is song is called Rimfire, and then the ending is called Katarurizumu. Not as easy to pronounce as Rimfire. Also, not <laughs> no, as all capitals Rimfire. Rimfire. Fantastic stuff. I really like in this ED that I believe they show the dog in the, the outfit. <laughs> he's in. He's a part of the team. Yeah, he has a little a little jersey. Yes, which was great. I loved it. I loved. I was loving Kuroko already, but you know what? They did need a dog. <laughs> I feel. I feel like it was the perfect addition to the team. Also, really funny. Uh, okay, so yeah, this... I don't remember. Do they end this episode playing the game? Like no, or or is this next episode start with them playing? It starts with them playing. It, st- it right? starts with them playing. Yes, because this yeah. one is just her just like talking some shit, saying they don't deserve Kuroko. Uh, but yeah, this one I really liked. There was a lot more of a comedy bits to kind of come down from the crazy game that was last time. I really liked the bit where um, Midorima and. Um, his side buddy are going into there and then the second that they see that they're in there they're like all right we're gonna leave but there's like it's crazy storming outside so <laughs> they, they, it makes it seem like they got blowed back into the into the into the the place that they were eating the restaurant that they were eating because it was just like too crazy so 
I thought that was funny. I like that the way I think they start treating that table because they're like, holy shit, there's just a lot of good players at that <laughs> one spot. Yeah, at that one table. That's crazy. I like the little dog that they find, um, uh, Tetsuya 2. I like that it looks basically exactly like Kuroko. I like that Kag- uh, Kagami is absolutely fucking terrified of this tiny dog. <laughs> Yeah, this little baby, it's like a little baby husky. It's very, it, it, it is actively as threatening as Kuroko himself. It is not a, it is not a good, it is not a scary dog to look at. I've been bit by a crazy scary dog before. This is not one of those dogs. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks like a stuffed animal. <laughs> yes, very close to. Um,. I like the stuff with the the Generation of Miracles old manager when she shows up. It's I also thought it was pretty funny. It's some pretty basic stuff, you know. Here's a girl, she walks in, she has bigger boobs than the manager that they have. We, they do some gags. I think they also continue this into like the ED of saying, next time on the next episode, and the manager's like, can, can you stop? <laughs> they, they like keep making like chest jokes, and she's like, please? <laughs> can you please leave? <laughs> Yeah, I think they also make the the joke in this one because it's raining and she comes in with the wet clothes. They do. So she needs someone else's clothes, and so she borrows the the coach the coach's clothes, but they're all way too small for her because her boobs are massive and the coach is flat. Yes, exactly. Which also I feel like is not 100 because if I you know what I'm not going to start this anyway. <laughs> it's also really funny because of all the people for a very attractive girl to be uh, super loving to, Kuroko is maybe the funniest person to have it just because he does not seem to really care all that much. Because he has zero, yeah, he's like the only one that's not obsessed with, yeah, yeah. He's just like um, he like actively doesn't care. He's like uh, Goku or Luffy. Is like there's so there he's obviously sure that there are women of the okay he's not like Goku but he's sure that the p there's women of the opposite sex but it doesn't really interest him <laughs> in any kind of sort of matter. <laughs> the reason I don't bring up Goku is because Goku isn't a hundred percent sure who is female and who is not. That's <laughs> at true. Certain he points. Know. Yeah. Now he's just like ah oh, no that. I'm pretty sure that's a woman. That's okay. <laughs> We're cool with it now. Maybe he's gotten better with age. But yeah, I like that stuff. I thought it was some good uh, comedy bits. And then I like the end of it where she's just like, nah, straight up, you don't deserve Kuroko. He's <laughs> He deserves better than where he's at right now. Which I feel like is what every single generation of Miracles except for Midorima has basically been saying is that he shouldn't be with you guys. He should just be with us <laughs> because you guys can't actively guys use him. Yeah. yeah, you can't use him well enough. No, you're not. The, the like, it's it's really it's a really good way of setting up a character who is one, both super weak, but also so insane at what he can do that the others just want him. Like the idea, it's it's really funny because a lot of the people who end up fighting against Kuroko that underestimate them are always the people who were not on the generation of miracles but then the generation of miracles who are like super crazy like the strongest in the all of japan are just like oh no 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 we need get me Korko. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's funny because everyone else is like wow this guy's a total loser but then the best players are like you have no idea like, yeah, you, know, you have no idea what you're talking about with this man. He's insane, and I think it's really cool to see it. Every I'm always happy to see it whenever it happens because it's always the people going like, "Really?" But then at least I think his team at least realizes like, "Yeah, we know Kuroko is good." But then she's just like, "No, I know that you know he's good. It doesn't matter because you're not good enough for him." <laughs> yeah, you you don't understand how good he is to even like begin to quantify it. Exactly, which is a uh, really good so. I enjoyed this episode. It also, I think, sets up a little bit of the other guy. No, I think, no, the next episode shows more of him, where they actually, where he's, um, yes, okay, you know. I, I was confusing the two episodes a little bit, but no. I, and this is also one where they're doing a lot of bits because Kagami can't play because he's injured, and he can't he can't do much of anything, and I think the ending of, the beginning of the next one shows him going against the other dude, right? Yeah, and then I think, Almine. yeah, against Almine, and then they start getting angry at him because they're like, "What the hell are you doing? You were told not to play basketball for a very like they they have to actively stop him from 
doing anything basketball for like it's like are you stupid you can't you're injured stop we need you at full power if we're gonna stand any chance and your dumb ass just keeps on fucking playing basketball he can't help himself he just so badly wants to do it but yep uh anything you have to say about this episode zen uh, no, it's just like you know, a generally good episode. It's it's a bit of a of a so so one because we just came off the heels of a huge like nail biter finish. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I really like the introduction of Almine. I really like him as a character. He's probably my favorite character in the series. So, oh, all right then, let's get right to talking about him because we'll go to episode fifteen, which is called "Don't Make Me Laugh." So we see Kagami and Almine's uh. The, the conclusion of their little scuffle, which is that uh, Kagami gets schmop by Aomine, just absolutely stomped. Um, the players find out, like you said, that uh, Kagami was playing because the coach looks at him and she's like, "Your your legs are like stressed. You've been like overexerting them again." And so he gets suspended until uh, the first match in the championship. So he's basically not allowed to practice anymore until the tournament. Uh, their first match is against Toho Academy, which is Aomine's school, so he's their very first opponent. Uh, uh, they kind of talk about how Aomine was one of the first players in the Generation of Miracles to be good, uh, like because basically they all kind of, as they grew, they got better and better, like as they aged. Uh, and Aomine was one of the first ones, and then he ended up becoming so good that he got bored because there was no one that could make him care about playing the game because he was just so much better than everyone else. Um, the game starts and he's not there. And so everyone's like, oh shit, you know, he's late. And so he, he tells the team captain, you know, hey, I'll make it. Uh, I'll make it before the game is over. You know, I'll be there by the second half. Just do Just do whatever for the first half. And so our boys are like, okay, so you know what we're going to do is we're just going to get such a lead on these guys before Almine shows up that he, ha- he can't catch up. Like, by the time he comes in, it'll be too little too late. Um, doesn't work at all. They they call themselves, like, oh, we're the opening act for Almine because he's better than us. So they're like, oh, we got this. And then Toe immediately scores and is basically like, just because we said we're the opening act for him doesn't mean we're not better than you. <laughs> and then the game starts. Yeah, which was a really uh, good, nice reveal. The, because they also go like, yeah, you got us with the opening act bit. <laughs> like, we really yeah. thought this was going to be easier. Uh, this one, I think, was a great setup for this character. Because you really get to see a lot of just, like, why Kuroko kind of had to go about soul-searching and figure out what it meant, basketball meant to him. Because he had to... What he had, what ended up happening to Almine, and how he kind of just like fell out of love with it. It's actually really sad to see someone just be so amazing at something that they loved, but then they're too good at it, and it just doesn't make the um. He's too good to the point where like the people he's going against don't feel like they actually have a chance. It's like soul crushing to an extent. Uh, how good he is, which is, I think, a very interesting way of kind of just showing why a character would suddenly fall out of love with something they loved, is the idea of that they're just too good. And when you're just too good, there's no one to really challenge you. If you don't have anyone to challenge you, then there's just nothing. Like He's trying to do something to very similar to where he's like, if I just play my best, then obviously someone will step up, and then we can have a real go back and forth of it. But then every single person that he tried to do it against just, like, wasn't having any of it. They are just like, nah this isn't happening <laughs> the, the, the the power levels are too <laughs> low on this one we ain't gonna be able to make it back there's no moment um oh yeah which i thought was very sad um it's 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 weird to think about of being something just like being so good at something to the point where you just like it does you don't feel any joy from doing it anymore when you're fighting someone else you're just like going through the motions kind of and you're just like existing in it so very good introduction to him a good way of for kuroko to be like why he was suddenly when kagami started acting a little bit more like him why he was trying to shut that down immediately because he's just like i already lost one big dude that i was really (laughs) already lost my good buddy once i'm not losing another buddy to this bullshit um and yeah, and also they show how much he's just, like, lounging about. He's not really taking training very seriously. He's, like, 
<laughs> taking food from the other people of his team. That's, so, that's one of my favorite scenes is when he leans over that one dude's shoulder and he's like, ooh, that looks good, and he grabs it. Yeah, he just starts eating it. Like, he doesn't <laughs> listen. To- <laughs> he's unbelievable asshole. When he tells him, like, hey, go practice, he immediately just fucking destroys the backboard. He's like, whatever, looks like it's broken later, and then he just fucking leaves. And then, yeah, like you said, like, even for the beginning of this one, he doesn't even really take it seriously. He was, like, half, he was asleep. He's like, ah, I'll be there in the second half. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be an issue. It, it's a very good introduction of someone who's just like, yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I know I'm too good for this. It's, it's the, it's the definition of someone who has just never actually lost. <laughs> and is so sure that they're never going to lose that he just, like, completely fucking fucks around for the most part. <laughs> It doesn't care about uh, any of the other people on his team because he knows like none of them actually matter. He could literally go out there by himself <laughs> and just win the game. And yeah, it was nice to also see uh, Kagami kind of. Fu- we don't ever see the game, but we just see like he shook like right after he's the the game of it. Because I remember because when he's like they're like yelling at him like what are you doing you idiot why'd you go and do it he's still like in a state of just like god damn that guy. What the fuck? <laughs> he was crazy. <laughs> Which I think is really cool. It's a it's one of the few times where I think he's kind of like not actually fired up. Which is again something that they showed with Almine when he was fighting the other people is that he was good, but he wasn't he was too good. So you couldn't actually like feel like you had a chance and you couldn't fire yourself up. You couldn't pull yourself up on your bootstraps and actually go like, you know what, if I just dig down deep and fight, I think I could make a win out of this. He was just <clears throat> so crazy powerful that they just went like, God damn. <laughs> I got nothing, yeah, man. Which, which, uh, yeah, I kind of like that because, you know, like you said, it is kind of sad where it's like, oh, he loves this game, you know, more than life itself and he just wants to have fun but he can't because he's so good that everyone else basically like I'm trying to think there's definitely other tropes like in other media where this has happened before where it's literally like you're you're so good at the thing you're so passionate about that no one wants to share that that hobby with you anymore mm-hmm. because they can't they have no chance yeah they... I, I know i've seen other things where it's like this and i don't remember um yeah, I've definitely seen it somewhere else. I just can't remember it, but it, it's... Yeah, shit, I'm trying to remember answer. Basically, yeah, but I mean, that's what it is. It's, I'm so good at this, and I love it so much, that... Oh, I think uh, Hikaru Nogo does it, I think, with... Uh, it might be Hikaru himself. I don't remember who, or, or maybe Akira. But they're both, like, uh, you know, getting really good at the game, and then they're so good that the people they normally play with are like... I. There's there's nothing for me here. Like, I can't even get better playing you because we're so far apart in ability that like it it it's just you kicking the shit out of me. Yeah. So like, for them, you know, it's just I'm I'm engaging in my passion with other people and I'm sharing this thing that I love with other people. And for them, it's oh, you know, you're just having fun being mean to me. Basically, is the way that they see it. Yeah. Uh, and so it is sad and you know disheartening and all. Yeah, it's 100% sad, and I feel like anyone could have that, because it's, I've definitely had those things where it's like, um, getting really good at a game, and then trying to go back and play it with, like, regular friends, and it's like, oh, I'm actually too good to the point where I can't play this with other friends, because they just get angry at me, but I'm just actually trying to have fun and <laughs> play, a, play a fun game with everyone, but I've elevated to the point where I just, like... I can't actually there's no enjoyment from them and there's no enjoyment from me from just like washing you out I want to have a legit fun time <laughs> it just doesn't exist yeah, it is- like I, I can't teach people games very well because I have that problem where like I, I can't I can't actively play much worse than I am at mm-hmm. it so like you know if I try to teach my girlfriend a card game or something I'll be like, if we're teaching her Yu-Gi-Oh, I'll be like, okay, I'm doing this and this and this. And she's immediately like, okay, we're done. (laughs) I I lose, I guess, and I don't know what to do with that. Yes. um, That's why anyone who has ever fought Zen in a fighting game (laughs) leaves it going, I don't want to play Zen in this fighting game anymore. Yeah. Yeah. To your your credit, you went like a solid 50-some games. 
I did, and I'm still trying. That's the difference is that you I'm boneheaded enough to keep going and keep trying. I, li- I like the idea of the unclimbable mountain. I like being uh, <laughs> Prometheus forever stuck getting his eyeballs plucked out by um, by crows. The Sisyphean uh, journey of me pushing this rock up the mountain to hope to go one <laughs> to go one oh what's in my life. I'm down for it, but not a lot of people are. They're just like, no, no, I got my ass kicked and I'm done and I'm never playing online again <laughs> and I'm out of here. Yeah, um, I mean, I can get it. Like feeling like you can't win isn't very fun. Like you, when you enter competition, it's hard to put yourself in that mindset of like. It's okay to lose because I can still get better. Because at, at some point, when the skill gap is too high, no, you can't. You know, yeah. like there are certain times. Uh, you know, fighting games are a good example, or like sports, where the things that your opponent are doing are so foreign to you that you're not even like, oh, I'm learning how to adapt this. You're literally just like, I don't know what just happened. Like, mm-hmm. I've had a lot of people tell me when I play Marvel with them, like, I don't know why I got hit right there. I, I don't understand what's going on. And that's kind of the fundamental difference. And with basketball, it's even worse because it's physicality. It, like You can't do anything about that, you know? If someone can run faster than you and jump higher than you, they're always going to be able to do that in that game. You can't adapt to that. Yeah. So, then so it turn- you know, it, it's just hopeless. It is hopeless. And it turns into a mental game of... How do I beat someone who is just straight up better than me? And the answer is, is that when you're playing a game, it's hard to know specifically how you can do it. It kind of just has to, you have to feel the game itself because there's definitely been scenarios where I've gone against people who I knew for a fact were either better than me or they had something better than me. But you find something and you figure out a way and you try and find a way to actually win it. And I think this is the point where, like I said, the sadness of it is, is that I've also never been in a situation where it's just pure hopelessness where I'm just like, God damn, I just, there's just no, there's no win. Not only is there no winning here, no amount of me putting effort into this will ever amount to me being able to beat this. It, it's it's really tough. And I think they've shown it really great with this character to have, um, I think it's a very interesting style of bad guy where it's like his his weakness was loving something too much. His one fault was that he loved this too much and he became too good at it and now there's no one really to challenge him anymore. And yeah, I think it's a really good setup, especially with Kagami on the other side of it being like he's someone who, as we've seen, when he fights when he fights a strong opponent, he's just like, no, nah, I can find it, I can find it in him. And then he fights this guy and he's just like nah <laughs> what do i do i just don't know is is this i don't remember because we watched these ones so long ago but is this the episode where uh i mean it has the flashback where he like jukes past the person who does just stand still and like doesn't even yes try? yeah that is exactly such the, a good flashback it is it it oh the, the, i because I, you could feel it because you could see it in his eyes at this moment he's just like I had killed the love of the game for him. <laughs> I had I had basically killed it for him because he's just like not even trying. It's really good. Like this setup for him is is some great stuff. I it w- I was enjoying it throughout it, and I was very angry at the end of it when I was going. I can't watch this anymore because I have to wait to record the video to see five more episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's the downside to the show. All of our Kuroko ones keep ending at really good cliffhangers. It does. It's killing me. We have to stop ending it on crazy cliffhangers. But uh, nothing we could do for it at the moment. But yeah, this was really good. This is a really good setup. And I can't wait to see how this kind of game goes down. Because again, without knowing where what direction it's going, I'm sold on that this might actually be... A, their, when, when their one hope is like... No, we need to win a lot in the first game and hope that he doesn't beat us in the second one. Like they're not even it's thinking. Such a crazy strategy is they're like, we're we're discounting the the possibility of being able to win this, so we just need to rack up such a big lead. It's insurmountable. Yeah, it's so it's such a crazy way. Like they're like, we're not gonna be able to beat him. But if we win by a whole bunch in the first half, maybe it will be too much for him. And that's their one hope. And it's like, well, (laughs) we have to make it so that he doesn't have enough time. At that point, he loses the timer. He doesn't lose to us. 
it's an interesting it's an interesting tactic and it really just shows how much they're just like oh no we we don't stand but then it's also funny because when the team is just like oh no 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 we're not as good as him but still better than you yeah (laughs) now it really does feel like okay so now they don't really have a chance Because their what their what hope was that maybe this team really sucks. Maybe they're like us when we don't have Kuriko and Kagami. And the answer is no. We're much better than that. <laughs> we're 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 no 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 no. It's not going to go that way. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You're still going to have a tough time against us. Ah oh, man, great great. So, do you have anything else specific to say about this episode, Zen? Nope. It's just really good. It's really good. It's really damn good. Really good stuff. I can't wait to see where it goes. But for now, that's it for Kuroko's Basketball. So what does that mean for next time? Well, next time it should be... Well, hopefully next Friday we'll be able to go into Gintama and see the four episodes. Because we're really close to a really cool arc. So I really want to get to that arc. And that one will be a huge big one where it will be dedicated, basically. A, that will be like a Giga Jump episode of Shonen Archive, because it's just too big. So we can't actually record two episodes, so we're just going to do one big, long-ass one for that one. Um, but in terms of Kuroko, next should be Jujutsu Kaisen, which we're getting pretty close to the end of Jujutsu Kaisen. I think it's not too much more before we are at the movie. I think movie. it's two more regular episodes and then the movie. Yes, and then we'll be able to start on season two for it, which is coming up pretty soon. June, um, June July? July? I think it's July. Yes, it should be July. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll continue on, Kuroko, two weeks from now. Hopefully, hopefully our works give us a fucking break, man. Yeah, please, cut me some fucking slack, please. Yeah, we really do like recording for Shonen Archive, and it actively makes us feel like, why are my Fridays so bad? And the answer is is that I'm not watching the anime that I usually do. Yeah, for I'm the- enjoying myself, watching the, the shit I'm trying to enjoy. Yeah, exactly, because we do have a whole lot of fun time, and we do have a fun time talking about it out and talking about the characters and stuff like that, and yeah, in general. <sighs> Just give us a fucking break, man. But yeah, and hopefully next week we'll see if we'll be able to do anything else. But hopefully by Friday we should be at least not back on track, but at least we'll be able to get out Gintama and Jujutsu Kaisen. And then hopefully if next week continues, Gintama and Kuroko again. And then by that point, it will be the mega big old jump of Gintama, which will be a huge big old arc. So. Thank you very much for watching Shonen Archive. That's it for the show. As always, you can find Zen over on his channel, where he's, I assume, extremely, some crazy stuff happening in Jump. Apparently, Pedo Bear got shot, and some pe- some crazy stuff is also happening in Jujutsu Kaisen. I, I, I almost want to just tell you, because it's so funny. I'm just hoping YouTube doesn't take me down for mentioning Pedo Bear. <laughs> They're really weird when it comes down to what... He pulls a stick of dynamite out of his underpants because he's trying to flash underage girls. And he gets shot by our main guy, but he... So our guy, he throws chalk at him, and then he shoots the chalk to make a dust cloud so he's not visible. So he doesn't... his, His awesome moves don't alert the children. And then he smacks the stick of dynamite away up into the air and knocks the guy out. What the hell? <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> it's so good. I'll have to check it out. I may as well. I should support him. I don't want another situation where he has to end it early. <laughs> like he had to with the golf one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's still went on for 60-some chapters. So. Uh, that's pretty good, but you could tell that he definitely had more plans for it. than. Yeah, for sure. It ends, like, right in the middle of a tournament in, like, a crazy spot. It, it does. That, that was where I was just like, damn, they re- he really wanted to continue this one. <laughs> because it did not end at a point where it just, like, made sense for it to end. <laughs> So, yeah, go ahead. Go watch him. You can watch Shonen and Chill. Hear him talk about it with the Ocean Man. And for me, st- stuff, hopefully oh, soon, work is going to be a little bit slower, so I'll be able to... You can see... Do you want to see a full playthrough of Parappa the Rapper? I May I suggest to you, me and my brother's full playthrough of Parappa the Rapper? <laughs> one of the greatest hey, PS1 I like games. Parappa the Rapper. You do? It's one of the greatest PS1 games, Zen, out there. Uh, 
one of the hardest bosses in the entirety of gaming is the cheap 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 chicken stage from Parappa the Rapper. Um, I have no idea how the fuck we were going to be able to beat it on video. I was actually telling my brother, I don't know how the fuck we're going to beat Cheap Cheap Chicken on video. We could barely do it back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not easy. Oh, man. Do you have a PS1 emulator? We- oh, you do, because you're playing Digimon World on it. Yeah, of course. If you want to see me. playing rad as fuck PS1 games on we Mondays do. now. Because I-, I love the PS1. I-, we- I could find you PS1 games till the dawn of time. Like, or the end of time, or whatever the fr- fucking phrase is. <laughs> till the ends of the universe itself <laughs> that uh, that is uh, uh ours. go ahead uh, we will hopefully get back to streaming too soon i just want to fucking I, I really want my work to just fucking calm down and thankfully guardians is coming out this weekend so i'm not having the fucking bombardment that i was having a couple for the past three weeks where they're just like we need to get every single one of these movies before fucking the Marvel movie comes in and completely destroys the ability to watch movies in a theater <laughs> because it's going to be the only thing <laughs> playing in the fucking theater. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And I was just like, oh, fuck, please. No. I was about to just say something that would get me in real trouble, but it's okay. We're going to end the episode right here. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully we'll be here next week. And if not, you can always catch us up on some of the other stuff we're doing. Till next time, say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Also, fuck Dokon. I just feel like saying that here at the end. <laughs> fucking Live, on the air. Can't, fucking can't take it back. Two multis, three features, and they're all fucking Pecan. That's it. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> pecan pie, baby. Pecan pie. Fuck that game. Later. <laughs>